Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you how in R and R Studio how we're going to get percent total calculations with an appended column and do some pretty cool uh, tests and uh, distribution plot and stuff like that with it. So basically, I had a uh, recent uh, post or a video I put up on how to do uh, percent total calculations in Alteryx. And so I had several people ask me, well, can we do that in R? Yes, of course we can. So this is exactly how we're going to do it. And so we start off with right here at the top. You can see I have everything commented out for you. You bring in these few libraries right here. So you got Read Excel, Tidyverse, and ggplot2. You don't have to have ggplot2 for this. Uh, you just could, wouldn't be able to do the graphs that we're going to do. This graph right here, percent total distribution, this, de this density plot, you wouldn't be able to do it without that. Um, so just if you don't have them, use the install packages uh, just like this line right here. Um, and in this case, I'm installing Tidyverse. And then you have to run the libraries as right here, these three. So you got read Excel is the first one we're going to use. So right here, I am bringing in my data set on this one right here. And in this case, we are bringing in Spa Skincare Sales UPC. So it's a UPC number, uh, the description of the UPC and the uh, number of items sold in a month's period. That's what the data is. So when I run this, I have up here data two, right? I'm putting it into data two. So let's go take a look at that. I have 18 observations of various uh, skincare product lines, uh, items. I have their count per month and their U associated UPC number. So that's what this is right now. That's what I have. Okay, so let's go back here. And next what I want to do is, are there duplicates? So I would use this line right here where we say, the this is a data frame. So we're taking non-duplicated data and putting it into a new data frame called data 2A. So data 2 has duplicates. If there are duplicates, data 2A will not. And what I'm doing is I'm doing it based on columns one and two. That's what this part right here is, okay? And so by doing that, what I've got now in data 2A is instead of 18 rows, I could have 10,000 rows in this, by the way, or whatever I want. It doesn't matter. Okay. In this case, I have, I'll have 17 rows. See the difference? 18 versus 17 up here in the top right in our global environment. Okay. So the difference is, is I'm going to have 18 versus 17. So in data 2A, I'll have 17. Now, it says five variables here. That's because I did the stuff down below. But at, the, at this point, it would have three. So actually, to show you that, let's just run this thing through the way I want you guys to see it. So let's remove all plots. Let's remove all data. All gone. See that? Both are gone. So what we're going to do is right off the bat, bring in data 2A. OK, let's run that. There it is, 18 observations of three variables. Now let's go here and do what I just told you with this one, right? And we have 17 observations of three variables, just one I want you to see. So if I go in here, I have 17 observations. If I go in here, I have 18 observations. I can tell you right off the bat, the first one and the last one are the ones that are being, that are dupes, okay? They may have a different item count, but remember, we're going by rows one and two, like I said in the code. So it says that if they are a duplicate in either of these two or both of these two, it'll take them out. So if we go back here, that's what that row was. Now what we want to do is we want to take, because remember 2A does not have, or 2, do not have uh, the total of the columns. We need that for because we're doing percent totals, right? Percent total calculations is what we want to end up with. That's our main goal here. So what I want to do next, okay, is we're going to add in those total columns. So let's do this right here, enter. And what that does is I'm creating a new appended field or column to data 2A, not data 2. So data 2, as you see right here, has three variables, but data 2A now has four variables. So I click here, there is data 2A. It has everything data 2 has, except it also has this total column, okay? And that's the total figured off of these with the extra duplicate removed. Now I'll get into that in a minute here, but let's go back to this. So I'm here, and now what we wanna do is we wanna find out, well, okay, how many duplicate rows did we remove? And the reason why we want to do that is, that, and see how I, I kind of move these over? 
Um, I indented them, and this is because you don't have to do this, but this would be like so. For instance, if I have duplicate stuff there, I want to identify that. I want to know what it is. I want to know which ones it is, and that way I can go get with the team that gave me those to figure out why those are duplicates. Are they erroneous, or are they really values that just somebody put the wrong UPC number or the wrong UPC description or both on, and they need to be accounted for? So we need to go correct for that. So. Again, what we did here is we, we stopped right here, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the number of duplicate rows removed, right? So if we do this, this will tell me. Now I could append that into the data if I want to, but I don't need to. What this is gonna do, okay, is it's gonna give me in, a, uh, in this vector right here, it's gonna give me the number of rows of data two, which is the original, minus the number of rows in data 2a. That's what this formula right here does. So that'll give me the total of the first one subtracting the second one, which will give me the ones that were removed. That'll give me the duplicate. So if I go and just click on this, which is the end result of that, I see right there at the bottom I have one row. Okay, So I had one row removed because it was duplicate. Now, what if I want to know exactly what that one row was? Well, this next row right here says identify duplicates for correction and see this row right here? This line of code is for data two, right? We want to get back, instead of what we did up above where it's not duplicated, that's where that uh, exclamation mark in front of duplicated is right here. Instead of this, what I want is I want the duplicated. Okay, so it's basically the same thing as what you saw above, but with the not removed from duplicated. So if I do this, right, and I run this, it'll give me a new, uh, thing in my environmental uh, area up here, but most importantly what I've got is this vector right here, and let's see, so let's see what happens here. This is all the fields for that one item that was removed, so I know that I have the UPC number, I have the UPC description, and the item count. So now I know that I one was removed with an item count of 12. Is that erroneous? Is it not? That way I have this data and it's one row and I can go back to the team that gave me this data and say, hey, here's an item that has a duplicate. What should I do with this? And then it's up to them to go and figure out what I'm supposed to do with that. In data analysis, we do not change the data usually. So we give it off to the team that gave us that data to find out and it's up to them to go figure out, okay, did somebody enter this in wrong? Is it correct, but it's entered in as a wrong description, a wrong UPC number or both? You know, They can go figure that out. So we have that. Then next what I want to do is, remember we're getting percent total calculations, right? That's our main premise here. So let's go and look at this line right here. This line, what this does, is it creates a new appended column called percent total. This is how you do it. So we create, we have the data to a data frame, we put a dollar sign, and we put the new column just like we did right here for total, same thing. But the thing is we're going to do a percent total based on a calculation, which is this right here. So what we're doing is we're taking data 2A's column item count, right? That's the item count for each item, and we're dividing it by the total, which is also in there, and then we're multiplying it by 100. So if I look at data 2A, what I'm doing is I'm taking for each row, I'm taking the item count, and I'm dividing it by the total, and then I'm multiplying that by 100. So that will give me the percent total for each one of these, and I'm gonna put it in a new row, or a new column, sorry, right here, and watch how this works. So it's in the new columns we call percent total. Why don't we just comment this above it to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see here. And what we'll do is put, uh, let's see, calculate, oops, my help, I spelled correctly, percent totals and append. Okay, so that's basically what we're doing here. So that's what this row does. So I'm gonna take this whole row, and this is what's great about our studio, you just hit control and enter and boom there it goes it's in there and let's go take a look at 2a right so if we look there or we can click over here it doesn't matter same thing we already clicked on it so it's up here and what we see here is we have our percent totals now so like this one right here is 15 percent 15.27 if you want to be exact 6.94 for this one 2.77 for this one and so on this is our percent totals now let's go back here and now we want to do another test so so i've indented this again for a test and what I want to do next is I want to test does this add up to 100% we want to make sure that we remember we removed a row 
and 12 item count under that row. So we want to make sure it still adds up to 100, and it will. So what we do is we go right here, and we uh, just select this whole row right there. And we're going to put this into the total vector here. So basically what I, all I need to do now is just click on this. And it'll tell you based on it's just this is just figuring out the sum of the percent totals column, okay? And it's 100. There you go. That's what you want to see. Um, if I had done the total, which you saw right here, if I had done this instead of on data 2A, if I had done this on data 2, now the problem is is that I would have a higher total because remember we removed one of those rows and our numbers would be off. So this is based on the data with that uh, duplicate row removed. If you had different data here, it would be based on all the duplicates removed um, based on how many duplicates you had, okay? So that's what that one does. Next, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get a little fancy. So we already tested it and stuff, and now we're gonna go a little bit further, and we're gonna go and create a density plot. Let's go and say, so we can go back to these people and say, right now, Based on this data that I have, this is the actual outbreak or breakout or a density plot of that data. So for a density plot, that's this area right here, what we're going to do is this is a density plot in this case of the 17 unique UPCs. Now you could have a lot more, it depends on your data set. So let's go right here and first to start off with the call to the density function based on the column that we want. So in our data frame, data 2A, we're taking percent total, that's what this is, and getting the density off of that. And we're putting that into a vector called den plot, or a data frame, you can just call it that too. Sometimes I call it vectors. Okay, so it's called den plot. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and get the percent total distribution. So the main, that's gonna be what we're gonna call the title and we're gonna plot that. We're gonna plot the den plot and call it the percent total distribution. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color it. So the polygon piece underneath it right here. So you got three pieces here, right? To make it less confusing. First I'm creating, I'm using the density function on the percent total column to make our den plot data. Then next I'm calling that den plot data in here again based on the plot function and that's you have your data frame and then you have the title of it. Then next what I'm doing is I'm calling polygon function based on the name of the or the this the den plot which is carries our density function in it and then I'm colorizing coloring it based on you know these colors. Do I want green, do I want red, do I want blue, what brown, black, whatever I want I can put in there. So I run all three of these, right? Just like this and there it is. So our, as I told you, the uh, this is the title right here. I could change the title to whatever I want, so it's based on your data, okay? And these are the colors. In this case, I picked green with an outline of red. I could have picked brown with an outline of red. I could pick any color combination I want here, whatever I think would look good. In this case, I used green and red. Um, and this shows me the breakout, and it shows me in the chart here, it shows n equals 17, that's the number of unique instances I have here. And here's the density and breakout, you know, for basically the different, uh, the volume or percent totals here. Okay, and that is basically, in a nutshell, us getting the percent total calculations in an appended column. So if I go back here, I have our data. And uh, what I, we did was we went from where we originally had a duplicate in it, we removed the duplicates, then on top of it, after removing the duplicates, we got the total, right? And then we got the percent total. So we have percent total for everything. We can graph that however we want. And we can show here we, uh, the distribution of that. So we have something to go back with. It's a reusable process. It's very easy to use. Um, it's not much code. The majority of code here is basically installing the packages and you know, running the libraries. Here's the first couple lines right there. Getting our uh, uh, data, which is right here with read XLSX function, which is from read Excel, okay? Then we're removing duplicates, adding the item count, um, and actually let's remove this for the total comps. We do that actually later. 
So let's just go and make that columns. And uh, actually, that should be column. And then we make a little test real quick to see how, well, not really a test, but we just want to see how many rows did we remove, how many rows had duplicates, and what were those duplicates. So we can get those dealt with later on. Then we go back. So you'll see the main rows that you need to use here to get this are right here on, on the left. They're not indented. So you got one, two, three, four, or we append it. And then you've got your data already. Okay, the rest are indented here, and that's just to test it, to get back the number of duplicates and the actual duplicate row information so I can get that dealt with and corrected if need be. And then I do some cool stuff down below. I just test it to make sure it adds up to 100%. And then we create a density plot based off that. You don't have to do that, but I just wanted to see it and show you something cool. I like to always bring in something a little extra for everything I do, even if it's something mundane, because it shows you the ability and R of what you can do really fast. So once you've built this, I can reason on any data set I want. And I just have to make sure, you know, I figure out what the columns are and correct it for the columns and the data that's in there. So I could change this to any other data set I want here. And that's what I encourage you guys to do. I have had people ask me, well, can you give us this data? Can you show us this data? Sometimes the data that I use is uh, proprietary data, so I can't quite always put that out there. But what I'm going to tell you is go to the University of California at Irving, uh, and uh, their data science department has a, Irving has a, uh, Data Science Department has a uh, uh, big data set uh, dump that you can go to and you can get all, or a collection and you can get thousands of different data sets out there. You can also look on Google and stuff. And what I encourage you to do is find data that means something to you because you're gonna learn a lot more from it. So take that data, stick it in here. You know, you've got the code right here. It's not very long. Um, and uh, run the data through and see how it looks, see how it come out, comes out. You may want to go and do some further analysis based on this. So this a lot of times this is just a uh, piece. And what we do with these R pieces like this, we hook them all together. And maybe we take this data out to Excel to do some further uh, analysis or to put into some dashboards for people um, or for users. It could be anything. But regardless, uh, play with some data. You'll learn some cool stuff. R is a really cool tool for uh, figuring out stuff and moving, uh, you know, updating columns, adding columns, appending columns, uh, exploring your data, and uh, quickly shooting out some numbers that are accurate and um, graphs and stuff to show what you've done. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And uh, please like and subscribe so you can get access to all my other uh, videos and you'll also be notified when I have cool stuff like this when I put a new video up. I try and put a new video out every week. Uh, sometimes I can't quite always get there to do that, but I will try every week to do that. Uh, please stay tuned. I've got more great stuff coming. Thanks again and have a great day.